Uh, hi everyone, welcome to the second session. Uh, I'm Agnes Strong from the National Health Research Institute and my institute is the Institute of Population Health Sciences. And it's my uh, great honor to introduce the first speaker of the second session, Dr. Tai Shifeng. In fact, you know him already very well. And uh, he's uh, got training uh, in Mount Sinai School of Medicine and also Children's Hospital in Boston. And then he came back to Taiwan to join the Institute of Genetics at the National Yangmin University. For well, that institute, he has uh, served as a professor for the many years. And then starting from 2000, he joined AHRI as the director of the uh, Division of Molecular and Genomic Medicine. And now he's the uh, director of the Department of Research Planning and Development, also the principal investigator of the uh, flag program, flagship program of uh, precision medicine. Today he's going to talk about the uh, population genomics and precision medicine, a Taiwan perspective. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Chai. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Agnes, uh, for a very kind introduction. So this is my third uh, talk uh, for this uh, these two days. So I have this disclosure. So I'm uh, working as a, a director responsible for research planning and development. So I think it's uh, uh, I'm feel obligated to talk about NHI and to introduce our institute. So our institute, National Health Research Institute, was established in 1996, now consisting of uh, eight research uh, units, a research institutes, and two research centers. We have uh, approximately 150 PIs and physician uh, scientists, and we hope we will very soon reach the, the annual budget of about 100 million USD per, per year. We pretty much model up the NIH of the United States, uh, but we have a much bigger intra neural program, a relatively small extra neural program. Uh, I think it's very important for NIH we are conducting mission oriented research, uh, working as a think tank for our government. And we have a very strong tie with our uh, Ministry of Health and Welfare. Uh, currently, uh, our institute is uh, operating two important uh, research programs that uh, make connection with the medical uh, centers uh, at large, including the Cancer Excellence Program, uh, Phase 3, and also the Biobank uh, Network of Taiwan, which uh, was managed and uh, led by our president and vice president, uh, respectively. Uh, for myself, uh, I'm a PI uh, operating uh, this uh, flagship program, and we now have four Nova 66,000 uh, operated together with our uh, commercial partner, the TGI uh, Incorporated, but we plan to expand uh, in the future. Uh, as a director responsible for uh, research development, uh, these are the key issues I have in mind, including to incorporate basic and clinical research on specific disease conditions, including cancer, obesity, those are the important public health issues. Uh, we also offer public health and policy recommendation to the government. Uh, we do our best to integrate and to apply health-related uh, big data. As most of you know, Taiwan has a strong basis to, through this uh, single-party uh, health national insurance program. Uh, we are very keen, and myself is uh, very keen to technology development. Uh, these are the items we would like to develop, perhaps uh, in the next uh, decade or so. Of course, training and education is our essential. So these are the outline I'm going to share with you. First, I'm going to uh, give you a report about the organization and progress made uh, to this uh, flagship program. And I will use two cases. One. Uh, is undiagnosed disease. Uh, some of you did not attend the conference uh, yesterday, today, so I'm going to showcase uh, at least one case. And also a new case is about familial cancers. I want to emphasize 
the participation of the public, uh, this is a very interesting case. Uh, finally, I think uh, I will talk about a concept uh, which I uh, have shown. Uh, I would like to take a trans-ethnic approach to compare cancer between different uh, ethnic groups. At the end, I will come back to the issue of what population genomic mean to us and how can we do precision medicine based on population genomic. Uh, it's always a great fun to uh, talk to Jun Yasuda, my good friend in Japan. So I remember we met in Malaysia and then uh, in 2015, uh, I happened to be in Sendai and uh, June showed me uh, a magazine, a uh, nature magazine, and he said, Peter, you should take a look at this, what UK is, is now doing. I hope June still remember, but June always bring me uh, good luck and good challenge, okay, good friend. Anyway, uh, this is what UK has been doing. Uh, UK would like to sequence, actually they have done it uh, last year. They completed 100,000 human genome and half of them are rare disease, half of them are cancers. And I think important for this slide here is uh, we need or they need a lot of these white coat experts to interpret and to engage uh, on the clinical field. Right. And this is another slide uh, we have been using and thinking as a framework to develop our project in which the Genomic England, uh, this is uh, proposed, and uh, I heard the presentation by Sir now, Sir Mark Caulfield. Uh, he has this uh, slide shared with the region of the UK. They want to take advantage of the big data. On the left-hand side is the biological data, from biobank, whole genome sequencing. And the left-hand, uh, sorry, the left-hand side, and the right-hand side, is the health uh, data as a primary care hospital app, so cancer registry, rare disease, and so on and so on. I think that the challenge part is this uh, IT integration, uh, data integration, and how this information can be utilized by a different uh, area for clinician, for training, and also for industry uh, development. So this is the UK version. So we have uh, organize a team, seven of us, some of them are here. We visit the uh, UK almost uh, two and a half years ago. And we then came up with uh, this idea uh, to implement. Uh, we were very lucky at that time, the government offered an infrastructure grant. Uh, NHI is at the core of this program, uh, supported by Minist Ministry of Science and Technology and Ministry of Health and Welfare and we would like to bring in the uh, innovation and the services from university and medical center locally and uh, sometimes uh, internationally. And these are the uh, final goal. The mandate of, of the government is among us to, I think, like every country, uh, not only to do research but also to promote uh, the economic uh, development. But to to my heart, uh, as a researcher, I think fundamental research and infrastructure are very important. So we set up these three goals. First is to, the easiest one is to establish molecular diagnosis and registry system for a rare genetic disorder. And also I learned from my Japanese friends in uh, Sendai that it, it's a good way of looking, taking a family approach, uh, three generation first of all. This is still ongoing. Uh, I think genetic information system for digital health in Taiwan is an uh, important goal. So this is the uh, framework for our flagship program. So by now, this is the, the program started 2017 and will end 2020. This is a four-year program, so we have now passed uh, two and a half years now. So we made progress on these four areas. So we organize the Taiwan Genomic Industry Alliance. We talk about Taiwan Rare Disease Network is become official yesterday. And uh, we talk about uh, how we help the medical doctors, medical center in Taiwan 
work on important issues, for example, leukemia, or urinary cancers, and so on. But today, I think uh, to coincide with the spirit of uh, international collaboration, I think uh, I would like to talk about international partnership, partnership if possible. But first, our first partner, of course, is the technology provider, uh, Illumina. So we purchased uh, with this grant uh, four units, and it was arrived. Uh, it arrived Taiwan on September 26, uh, two years ago. We set up this goal to develop step by step, starting from something easy, relatively easy, rare disease and cancer. And then we move on to natural rare disease, where, for example, hearing impairment is an important area we can work on, and also epilepsy. So I, we heard a very outstanding presentation on the neurodevelopment epilepsy, and also from uh, Professor Wu about uh, NTUH, about the hearing impairment, a very comprehensive program. I think for the long run, I believe a whole genome sequence is not only a driver for pursuit medicine, it will be for the future, it is a system that we can everybody use for their lifetime care management. So this is my uh, general idea. Uh, this is the report score now, so thanks to Illumina we have uh, continued to improve our protocol and work on rare and difficult disease on the left hand side and also cancers uh, for the right hand side. We focus on cancer, on two cancers for now, uh, liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, FCC for short, and also lung cancer. Uh, adenal carcinoma affect a lot of uh, patients. Uh, my wife died of lung cancer, so I have a deep feeling about uh, what it could uh, bring to Taiwan and what we can do with that. And for rare disease, uh, we select a few areas I'm going to elaborate uh, later on. But gen this generally undiagnosed disease is an important area. So we spend some time and we're very happy that we hope we continue to maintain the record that we we can provide DNA diagnostics through whole genome sequence. Uh, at right now, over 60% of the cases. Okay. This is a slide uh, made by a very outstanding uh, fellow in my laboratory, Dr. Lin Yongfeng. Uh, in this slide, I want to emphasize not only the, the, the front end to recruit patients, and also the back end, how we can to integrate the, the very information and to provide this to the doctors and to engage with the patient and provide social uh, support. We are very lucky to work with the Taiwan Human Genetic Society on one hand for the, for the medical professional and also we are very lucky to have the Taiwan Foundation uh, for Rare Disorder. This is the data until last month. So we have worked on uh, almost uh, 140 and complete analysis and we can provide a DNA diagnosis for different types of disease. In particular, what is a disease which when the patient and the doctors come and they don't have an idea about what the disease is. So the first case is an 18 year old girl uh, I think Dr. Lin presented uh, this case uh, yesterday. Uh, she had an uh, eye and ear problem early on uh, at birth and had multiple organ defect and has a very unique facial features and somehow uh, she has a uh, developmental uh, or growth delay. This was a typical uh, case of uh, how we work with uh, doctors uh, like uh, Dr. Lin Champagne. So we asked a doctor to present to us because in our laboratory uh, only myself is a medical doctor and other people is a PhD. So we have a standard sheet so they, uh, the doctor need to fill in. So in this, uh, I apologize some of the uh, terms are in Chinese language. 
So the basic this case uh, has a crab palate and has a heart defect, uh, atrial septal defect, and uh, and and they have poor weight gain and short stature and so on. And importantly, these features, if we pay attention, we might be able to, this is a, a narrowing of the uh, facts. Okay, that's very typical of this disease. So Dr. Dean was puzzled, and uh, he provided us with a term called uh, as multiple congenital anomaly. And importantly, uh, these patients and the family spend a lot of effort went through a cytogenetic analysis, chromosome study, array CGH, and so on. So many, many years, this is a, in fact a diagnostic uh, policy as uh, described by many and also by Dr. Lin is that we could not get an answers about this even we went through these uh, filters, these candidates, until we talked to Dr. Uh, Jing Yong Ha. And she's an expert on heart development, and he, he uh, suggests that maybe we should change our direction of looking at the data. I think with the GF or GH, we may be able to do it uh, much faster. Okay, but at any rate, so we were able to find and make a diagnosis. This is the case of a catch uh, syndrome, uh, child syndrome. So this is a, a very uh, typical uh, facial features, this case TRDN 88.1. Uh, we did a trio analysis, um, and more is amazed by what a single gene, in this case CDH7 on chromosome A, a deleterious mutation can cause multiple phenotype in one, uh, in one person. So uh, we can solve, we always learn something new when we find a disease like that. We have to read about this charge syndrome, and this is uh, what uh, we refer to from the OMI database. So that's the first case. If that uh, show us that this case, this girl has spent, or well, his family spent 17 years without knowing the diagnosis. Case number two. This is a peri of familial cancer. <coughs> cancer are mostly sporadic, but in some cases, uh, there are multiple cases in one family. Uh, we are particularly interested in this. This is a case of endometrial carcinoma. And a graduate student, uh, she's at that time 25 years old. Uh, she was very, she was healthy, but she wondered what happened in her family. I, I'm really thankful to her and she with us in this audience, okay. So I got the permission from her to share with you the story, okay. And actually she devoted her career in the laboratory to do most of the work. So that's a very uh, touching story, okay. Uh, this pedigree, this is the graduate and her mom and aunt has this endometrial carcinoma. And the, this grandma who passed away also died of uh, endometrial carcinoma. And uh, the grandma, this one has, also has the same disease. But this one, the elder one, who is about 80 years old, uh, does not have this disease. So this is a very interesting case to us. So uh, she wondered what would happen in this man. Of course, the others uh, have other cancer as well. Okay, so we conduct whole genome sequencing on four of the affected individual and one unaffected, uh, all ladies, okay, 80 years old. So we use uh, this uh, workflow. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Ding Yonghong is quite good and he has very good uh, genetic training. So we conduct whole genome sequence. We identify non synonymous mutation. We look for a minor allele frequency that is uh, lower than one percent, and these are the uh, variant that is commonly present in these three ladies who has handled natural custom, and then we subtract the one that from the control, the 80 years old grandma. And then we predict protein structures, uh, 
variant that will affect this protein structure. And finally, we're looking to this Taiwan Biobank database. So I think uh, for different cases, we have different designs. Uh, so this is the data now. So we identified some of the, at least five candidate genes we think is possible. So first, uh, we refer to the cancer database, the cosmic whether this gene uh, present uh, as a cancer-related gene, yes. Uh, this IPGEF3, which is a REF uh, grounding nucleotide exchange factor. So you don't have to worry about what this does in the biochemistry. And it's basically a cyclic binding protein. Uh, but mutation has been recorded in 3% of the cancers of this category. The other is a very commonly mutated KMT protein, one such as one percent. But we look into the myelin minor radio frequency uh, in the Taiwan Biobank data, and KMT two D uh, encodes this is a lysine methyl transfer to the histone lysine transfer. Interesting, these two genes are close by, but not too far by one point two uh, megabits. So in order to look into whether how this gene might possibly impact on cell proliferation, cause this uh, endometrial carcinoma, uh, this young graduate student conduct this is her work now. So she uh, wants to show that KMT two D in fact uh, regulate IPGF three and I I uh, IPGF three control the downstream expression of MAC kinase and PI3K kinase all pathway. So without going to this uh, molecular cellular data, uh, at least there's a cellular uh, research that the experiment in, this, in the cell culture system that demonstrate the related, relatedness of the relevance to this disease pathogenesis. Endometrial carcinoma is an important uh, gynecological cancer uh, since uh, now cervical cancer is, uh, has been well controlled by a lot of public health uh, measures. Uh, globally, uh, this disease is on, on the rise. So we would like to look into uh, whether this uh, variant will predispose some of the Taiwanese uh, into developing this cancer. So let's go back to this case now. So one of the, the first is out of curiosity, and then is the idea about participation. So we <coughs> we were surprised that we can find we could find the answer. So then we conduct genotype, and we found that, that in fact the graduate students, she herself affect uh, inherit this uh, risk idea. So we talked to her, and actually her mom. Uh, comfort her that she said, I'm fine, okay. As long as you know your risk, okay. Because the, the endometrial carcinoma will, uh, has a disease onset maybe after uh, 40, 50 years old. So she can still uh, manage her life and know her risk and then uh, manage uh, her career. So I think that's an important message is to learn from your marriage, uh, your family history, uh, do the genetic test, and then uh, make a plan for your uh, life. Okay. That's the message. So now I'm going to talk about the uh, one of the area I've been working on, and I like the idea of uh, conducting trans-ethnic comparative genomic analysis, focusing on different type of cancer that is uniquely present in Taiwan. UTUC, you heard the Dr. Wei's uh, presentation yesterday. Lung cancer is uh, very unique in Taiwan. Uh, liver cancer and also breast cancer. Uh, early on in 2004, that's a long time ago, 15 years ago, uh, we conducted research on uh, EGFR mutation and we reported that 55% of the adenocarcinoma of Taiwan. In that time, we spent six months, or at least three months, we're doing PCI and precon sequencing. That was the pre-NGS era. Uh, we were able to uh, report why 
Asian people uh, has a better uh, response to tyrosine kinase uh, inhibitor. Now we uh, conduct whole genome sequence. Uh, we have collect over uh, 200 cases of lung cancer uh, genome right now. But at the early stage, we analyze uh, 48 uh, genome, and we can see that uh, LA by AR is the most uh, common mutation at this in, in this collection. I think the, the the because of a lot of new knowledge and public trend, a lot of people are now doing low dose CT, so a lot of cancer are picked up early. So these are some, uh, I think the, uh, we might be able to see uh, what the changing uh, uh, mutation pictures and at the early stage. So this is a very interesting project uh, for Taiwan. Uh, the, the other one is uh, neurological cancer. We heard the presentation yesterday by Professor uh, Dr. Wei. Uh, this is the rising instance of uh, UTUC, which stands for upper uh, upper tract urethral cancer. Uh, relative relative to breast bladder cancer in Western countries, represent uh, about five percent of the all urological cancer, but in Taiwan is one third. So it's quite different. And most of the patients, actually the, the female, our number is the male, that's another trend. And most of them are non-smoker. So smoking and gender, male gender being the risk factors in the Western country, but not in Taiwan. Okay. So we conduct a uh, collaboration with uh, Hirosaki uh, Cancer Center in Japan. Basically, we collect Pair sample of UTUC uh, altogether 49 cases, 31 from Taiwan and 18 from Japan. Because Dr. Wei already uh, made a very good presentation, so I just summarized the data here. Is, uh, uh, suffice to say that this is uh, the mutation, tumor mutation burden from Taipei Veteran General Hospital from Kaohsiung, Changgeng, and this from Hirosaki. Clearly, you can see that if we calculate this tumor mutation load based on how many mutations found in this coding region, about 70 megabase region, uh, how many uh, mutations per megabase. You can see that the Taiwanese uh, patients have different uh, profile of tumor mutation burden as compared to Japan. Also, uh, Sean talked about the mutation of signatures. Uh, indeed, Taiwan has unique signature associated with UTUC. Uh, and it's possibly associated with uh, aerosol co-chip acid. So that's for the UTUC. So uh, this uh, environmental toxin is originated from some kind of thermal medicine or uh, volcanic uh, extract, we don't know. But this is another instance, uh, another case is we conduct the uh, comparative genomics on liver cancer now. So we have collect 100 cases of uh, liver cancers, and we analyze the mutational signature related smoking to this uh, acid, which is signature 22, and also a very well-known uh, risk factor for liver cancer, aflatoxin. So I want to bring to your attention that for the Japanese uh, liver cancer, uh, the signature associated smoking is higher compared to Taiwan. Taiwan is very successful in anti-smoking, uh, anti-cigarette uh, campaign. And, but these two are significant, much higher than Japan. And also this aflatoxin is highest in, in China. So what I want to share with you is that by looking at this uh, uh, mutational signature, we might be able to uh, get an idea about the environmental uh, genetic interaction. How about the future? So we have heard a lot of exciting program for population genomic uh, in the UK, in the US, and Australia. So we propose that for Taiwan, we would like to uh, provide uh, whole, genome, whole genome or whole exome sequence, we don't know yet. But we would like to serve our patients and we set up a goal for sequencing carbon million uh, for patients. Uh, I borrowed this slide from my friend from uh, Iromia. Uh, 
it's important to aggregate data through uh, this population uh, genomic. So we have a lot of data collected for individual learning from the past, from other patients. For individual patients, when one has a uh, disease and the genome analyzed, we can actually take the information from this group of Taiwanese or any other population. So I put this uh, Chinese to, in order to communicate with the laymen or the uh, general people that uh, literally, they say, your dream, my dream, everybody's health. Okay. So, I hope that uh, convey the message. In order to uh, promote uh, biotechnology, remember, I think uh, we need to engage the company, the farmer, the, the informatic company. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, NHI has a position to uh, manage the biobank, the cancer research program, and also the genome. So we welcome all the research proposal that can utilize this information so that we can bring uh, clinical utility, uh, patient benefit, and uh, economic uh, interest uh, to our country. So in summary, I believe, and I hope I convinced you, the structure program has built the infrastructure for Taiwan, and we have established a system to serve the need of whole genome sequence for rare disease and cancer, and maybe it's just the beginning. A TRBN, Taiwan Rare Disease a Network is a network of medical professional uh, research program and patient advocate group, advocacy group uh, to offer the NI diagnosis of unknown and, and lower rare disease. Uh, Trans-ethnic comparative genomic study, I believe, is a powerful way to reveal uh, this uh, very interesting environmental genetic interaction in cancer. And I hope G2020 is a pilot project for G2025 will bring us to the next level up and I will ask you to contribute. Uh, we will, will invite you to have an input of clinical idea, research idea, and cooperation. So uh, this is a north slide. We thank for the government, for the foundation, and also uh, our flagship team. Uh, last but not least, I think uh, without Illumina and also this NHI forum, this meeting and this program will not be possible. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>